welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have my fiance. <laughs> Finally, you guys get to meet him. Guys, say hi, say hi. Hello. <laughs> this is Akhil. For all of you who do not, I'm sure all of you know. I don't even have to give any introduction. Um, I've been seeing this guy for like 10 years. Can you believe it? Yeah, 10 years. And um, they know like a little background of us because I did a video on how my parents got to know about us. So we've been like high school sweethearts, you can say. And it's a lot, it's been like a crazy roller coaster, lot, lots of ups and downs and... Um, <laughs> we met 11 years ago. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, 11 years ago. We actually finished 11 years already in March, yeah. not 10. In Ma oh yeah, in March 10. In March. We pretend sometimes it's lesser because we feel ancient. We are so ancient. <laughs> All our friends, like seriously, we're the oldest ever. Yeah. Like, yeah, and uh, the latest to get like married or something. Like, at least in my friend circle. So, so when in 2000, I think 14-ish? I might do 2008, 9. Uh, 2008 we met, huh. but then I'm I'm thinking which year I went to San Francisco. Yeah. I don't I don't remember. I think it's 2012. I think. Um, yeah. For I world. was in the U.S. for one year, um, and I think that was the time that Malvika had like the strongest. Um, <laughs> what would I say? What? I think you held the relationship the strongest when I was away. Yeah. Um, yeah, because a lot of people, yeah, it's tough because a lot of people ask me, in fact, like, they know you went to San Francisco, they know you went away for a while uh, to work and stuff, so they always ask me, how was it difficult, like, how did you all manage, because they're in 10 year long distance relationships, like, most of my, I have the same, they're like, away and apart for 10 years, you know, wow. yeah, so they have like, they, they're like maintaining the relationship, so they always ask me, I know how it feels, and they're like, how did you pull it off so long, and ours is just one year and six months, uh, yeah, it felt like 10. It felt like 10. It was the worst time, at least for me. I wow. could not even... 10 years. Yeah. But, um, so they were asking me, like, how did you keep it together? And, you know, Face things time. like that. FaceTime, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, FaceTime was the glue <laughs> yeah. to keeping us together. But, like, you know, we both had, like, different lives and stuff. I'm jumping directly into the part where he left because earlier it was like your normal college relationship like really? I was in yeah I was in nationals okay in Bandra and he used to live really close by and um, we used to secretly see each other that's a whole other story <laughs> yeah so I left basically <laughs> basically he left it was amazing and very like childish because I was like 17 I was like super young and uh, then he left in the middle and that's when it got really serious for me at least like he was growing up, he had dreams and goals and he was like, I need to like leave now because you know, and I was all this so in love, like super in love and I wanted him like all the time. I was super vulnerable, I just needed him at every point. So I think um, for me to understand what dreams and goals are and having to move away for a certain dream was alien to me. I'm like, how can you just leave someone behind and go? I was very like raw and new, yeah. So for me, it was all very difficult. But yeah, as he said, <laughs> what? I kept it together. <laughs> yes. She's definitely the glue in Akika. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was away for a year and then um, mm. I came back. Mm. Uh, then I went back to London. And then for when I was in weeks. London, we had a rough patch. Uh, we didn't speak for a bit. And then. Yeah, in San Francisco, we didn't speak for a bit. And then we made up and then you went to London. Yeah. Huh. And I think that distance really gets, you know, in the middle of relationships. It really does. And if you have to make it work, you make it work. Mm. Yeah. And then in London, I realized that no, I want her back. I came back and. Uh, See, it's nice. You know, you want to meet her. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so I did. So I came back. And then I think since I came back from London, which was in 2014, yeah, 15, 15. Um, it's I think been 14. Great. Yeah. Uh, it was sort of a defining moment where the decision was made that, you know, we really wanted to be with each other. And then since then, we sort of smoothened out the rough edges between both of us and found a way to make it work. I think it's also the time when she was finding you guys uh, and yeah. like sort of that has yeah. helped shape her into being um, the person that she is today and the way that we make it work. So I think that it's fair to say that all of you guys have a role to play in making <laughs> this happen. Um, yeah. We yeah. always, I always told Miles that I want to be with someone where there's mutual respect, where I can respect you for the work that you're doing, not just 
you know, think that you're beautiful or good looking, but I want to care about the the work that you do mm. and that you should be the top of your game if I'm the top of my game. And it doesn't really make sense if if just one person in a relationship shoots up to the sky and, and the other person is sort yeah. of left behind. It's, it's okay when you're growing up, but then I guess like... The, the other person who's not doing so well feels very insecure and yeah. they feel down and they push the person away so like even I believe it's important even in friendship in any way to just grow together I feel like if you all grow together you have so much more to add you know to your life and generally and help each other grow right yeah, so it's yeah. not just it's yeah. not just about focusing on yourself and making sure that you're growing but then yeah. um, lifting all of them up together yeah. yeah having the conversations making the connections doing the work that needs to be done to make sure that everyone grows together because um, that way it's a long lasting relationship with mutual yeah. respect and I think respect is an important part of every relationship mm. um, but coming to sort of the the agenda. Yeah, right? we just give you like a backstory and I'll tell you more in another video when he's not there. I'll tell you all the details, you guys. Uh, but for this video in specific, um, we want to tell you about the proposal. My dream proposal. I'm sure you guys have already watched the video and I'm in love. Thank you for all the views and comments, by the way. Okay, so he's going to tell us how it all began. Like when did he begin um, the planning of the proposal and stuff. So he's going to give you a little backstory of how we never wanted to get married until we were like 30, basically. Yeah. So I'm going to go way back, right? I think that when we were quite young, we decided that there's no way we're getting married before 30 <laughs> because both Miles and I wanted to sort of explore the world, go see everything, be in the girlfriend boyfriend phase. Yeah. You know, from my side, being scared of commitment, uh, always. Yeah, he was super, you guys. Like, he to call super, me you guys. super like <laughs> you know when I was 20 was that F bar birthday 20 first. first that's when he like said okay what? my girlfriend you would actually send my girlfriend then mm. girlfriend also he wouldn't say he's like <laughs> I don't know what phase he was in but yeah it was very like, difficult for him to like acknowledge okay now because he was never into like dating anyway he told me um, yes I was like a butterfly boss I yeah, was just, he was a bad boy, you guys. Yes, I was just going around, sort of seeing what flowers are out there, and then, like, yeah, I just sort of, like, you know, there are these flowers that just they have this glue on them. You go on them and they're stuck. Like that's sort of what happened. Yeah. With us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but yeah, coming back, right? So, we were sure that we were not getting married before thirty, and, like, throughout the ten years, Miles has never been sort of nagging about getting married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I then was suddenly, six months ago, something happened to him. See, all my friends are getting engaged and like, I'm like, but we know each other for 10 years. I'm sure of you. Are you? I was doubting him. I'm like, are you sure of me? Miles, I was like, are you, are you sure of me? You were doubting me? I used to ask you and you're like, Maaz, are you? Shut up. Don't even say that. He kept saying, I'm like, dude, is he even sure? Like, come on, like, ask me now what is left for me to do that he would ask me finally, like, you know, like that point, like I'm gonna ask Nothing, him. Nothing. Just to get me. to thirty. I'm the whole plan was waiting until then. So you were just like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know he was like planning it behind, you know. And I, she started sending me pictures of yeah. rings. <laughs> like, look what Katy Perry got. Like, look what this person got and that person got. Yeah, I was. I sent She's him like, like yeah, but I want what is it called? What princess cut? cut? Princess cut and this and that. I sent him reference. He's like, yeah, Miles. I'm whenever. like, yeah, like you know, this is fine. But like, what's the what's the rush? <laughs> I'm like, what's the rush? And you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I when is that, he proposing? When is he proposing? Yeah. Every trip that I went to, she's like, <laughs> yeah, everyone thinks you're going to propose. I'm like, what is happening suddenly this year? The Paris trip. They were like, he's going to propose to you. He's going to propose to you, everyone. But he didn't. Um, I was planning for New York. And, no, let's say, let's go back. So, around July of this year, I said, okay, it's going to happen this year. Let's plan it. When can we do it? And then we were also planning our annual sort of vacation because, um, we take you know, we take one or two trips every year. So we we're planning our annual vacation. And I was thinking we'll go to New York because my brother lives there and mm. he loves planning and he's like, he yeah. plans everything to the T. Yeah, and he's very um, grand and, you know, he's out there. He's flamboyant in a good You've way. seen the wedding. So you yeah, know. Yeah, the go wedding, you guys. <laughs> they know the go so, wedding. Yeah, he's, he's really out there. So. I wanted to leverage his planning skills um, and, and sort of do it in New York. And Beatrice, my hobby, uh, <laughs> is his amazing taste, like yeah. really 
uh, really chic, classy, and like you know, I would not have to do any work basically. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's awesome. Let's do New York. And then Mal started cribbing. She's like, we've been to New York so many times, and why do you want to go to New York again? Yeah. Uh, so I was like, you know, New York, kitni baar gaye. I'm like, let's go to Greece because I've seen Instagram pe all these Santorini beaches and all. I'm like, dude, I have to see Greece this year. You guys know that. I was like, I have to see it. So I didn't know. Yeah, he was planning to propose. <laughs> anyway, like it was a it was a good plan. Anyway, I think that. For me, what matters is that when I'm doing something special, I want nature to be the decoration. Yeah. Right. The, so yeah, the backdrop. The backdrop, right? So instead of having like a decor or setup or like things in the background, I like nature to be the background. Which you guys saw the whole ocean and yeah. So uh, we were planning New York, and then she shot it down. And so when I started thinking about Greece and Santorini, this was I would say first week of August when we knew we were going to Santorini. Those were the dates, um, and you know we knew we were going to Santorini, Mykonos, and Athens. Yeah. Um, and she was all hyped about Santorini, so I said, okay, it's going to be Santorini. We were in Santorini for three nights, so we so we were landing in Athens, and then we take a transfer flight to Santorini. Mm. Um, and the idea was to land in Athens, and the same day you take another flight to Santorini, right? Um, and so we land in Santorini at like 7 p.m. So that first night I couldn't do anything. So I planned that okay, I'm gonna do it on the second night. So now I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I know when I'm going to do it. Uh, I don't know where. I don't know how I'm going to plan this in Santorini. I can't imagine. Oh and so God. she always made like a big deal about the proposal, right? Because <laughs> of you guys again. Like she needs that. Like, no, I just love proposals. Like I just I'm that girl. I'm sure all of us. Okay, I'm not a, like a big wedding fanatic. Like I'm just like, shadi ka nahi socha. Like proposal, I'm like I've seen every video. Papa, post. like you, boss. Why? I, it's a moment I wanna like see, guys. You saw the video. Imagine seeing that when you're like 80, bro, and you're like literally in your last year. Shadi kam kyu hai? Kam nahi hai, lekin. You decided that moment that okay, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. That is. <laughs> that is scam. I'm marketing. I'm not even a diamond one. <laughs> no, I really love grand proposals. Like I wouldn't mind a restaurant proposal, but <laughs> that's what she expected, by the way. I expected like a she... sunset restaurant proposal. Mm-hmm. Expect you can't expect things like this, babes. You know that. Uh, coming back, right? So I. I was thinking where I'm going to do it and then like being the person that I am I'm not the hands on let me do it myself kind of guy um, I'm really good at breaking up tasks into mini tasks and then assigning people and delegating and telling them to do it nicely and then overlooking that it's done perfectly mm. so I knew that like I'm not physically going to find vendors for everything I'm just going to find sort of a like a proposal planner or a wedding planner and then tell that person to sort of yeah. plan the event for me and so I did um, I started looking up online there are a lot of these uh, so if you if you look it up there are a lot of these preset packages like you know proposal in Santorini because Santorini is quite a popular place for proposals, for proposals. Um, but they they felt really transactional it was like okay so many euros you get one bouquet one bottle one this yeah. it's very transactional there's no sort of Emotion. special or exclusive side to it right um, so I'm like, yeah, in that case, you're just like paying money and getting a proposal and I didn't want that. So I, I'm not on Instagram, you know that. <laughs> so, so I, um, I started looking for good photographers in Santorini and then I identified a good photographer. And then I asked the photographer to tell me if there's someone that, he know, that he's worked with um, who can plan the event for me. So he connected me with someone and it's, it was a strange experience. I think that my personal experience in Greece is that Greece is a very transactional country. Maybe because of the recession that's going on over there, like mm. the economy is really messed up. Uh, but all the people, it was always about money the money. And money and right? Like you pay me and then I'll talk to you. You pay me and then I'll do something for you. And like, you know, coming from India, there's a lot of relationship building. There's a lot of trust building that, okay, you do like, you know, at least send me some pictures of your past work before I pay you. She's like, no, like, you know, unless you pay me, we're not even going to give you ideas. It just felt weird, mm-hmm. uh, but in any case, I went ahead with that that proposal planner. She she identified a few locations for me, gave me a few budgets. Most of the budgets were over the top, completely. Um, and you know, for some time, I was stuck between how much do I want to spend, where do I want to do this, and then 
we found this like she found this one one spot which you saw uh, which is a 400 year old windmill villa uh, which means the, the windmill is the villa so it's yeah. a uh, it's a villa at the edge of the cliff facing the caldera mm -hmm. caldera is sort of the so you know I santorini know. is is a group of islands in a circle um, and so all the villas looking inside of the circle which are on the cliffs um, that's sort of the caldera view um, and we wanted a, a villa which has the perfect view of the sunset right so the santorini sunset is <laughs> <laughs> oh man the Santorini sunset yeah is the one of the, one of the world's, world's best, best sunset you and it is. Uh, see, it is you know you should put in one of the pictures of I the did. sunset mm. so that you can feel it it's is because um, you know when the sun is setting there are so many shades of orange to blue yeah. that you can see that everything is just amazing and so when I saw pictures of that online and I saw pictures of other proposals I was like wow like this is solid right yeah and so at the end of the at the end of the planning there were these two villa options right one villa which was facing the caldera facing the sunset which was stupendously expensive which is the one that we chose and then the other one which was you know, it was a really good villa, but it didn't have the sunset view, right? Mm. Um, and I was like, like, you know, how good can the sunset be? Like, the lighting will still be the same, and you know. <laughs> so I went to my mom, and my mom is like, Beta, you know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Tu kar. My dad is like, Aray, kya farak padta hai? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I, I resonate more with my mom. So I, I'm like, okay, you know what, screw it. It's going to be once-in-a-lifetime, it's going to be worth it. Um, and so we decided the location, but the location um, was was not available on the day that I wanted to propose. Oh. So he said, which was the second night in Santorini, but he said that it's only available on the third day, right? Um, which was the last night that we were in Santorini. So I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter. I really love the location. Might as well. Like, you know, I don't care. Let's do it the third day. I checked the weather for all the three days in Santorini, all three days sunny, all three days amazing. I'm like, solid, he no problem. He booked it for the sunset. Remember this. Yeah. Alright, so we knew the location and then I started working with the, the proposal planner on the decor and everything, like the flowers, everything else. And at some point it just became really tedious, yeah, tedious oh, and, and transactional. Like more than tedious, it was just like... There was no emotion. There was there no emotion. No... There was just money, right? So I was like, you know what? I can't deal with this anymore. Um, you know, this is going to be a very emotional setting for me. So I want to be with somebody that um, is in that same vibe with me. So I, in a fit of, uh, what should I say? Annoyance. And also Beatrice, sort of my, my hobby, helped me a lot making these decisions, right? So she was in the same group, WhatsApp group with the wedding planner. And she hated this planner from the first day. <laughs> so she's like, Akhil, you don't need to work with her. I'm like, you know what? She's someone that's still doing stuff for us. So I tried to make it work. But at some point, we, we cut off the thread with her um, and said, you know what? I'm just going to do it by myself. And so I reached out to some of the vendors that she had connected us to, including the owner of the villa. And I asked the owner of the villa if he can help us um, plan the entire thing because, you know, it was his villa and, you know, he could sort of get everything done. He's done multiple proposals there before. Mm. Um, and so then he sent us a package with uh, with the flowers, the candles, the the dinner, the champagne bottle. Yeah, Petros. So, Shout out. <laughs> yeah, Petros. So Petros sort of made this entire plan for me where he said, okay, you know what? We're going to do the villa with uh, a private dinner. I'm going to hire a chef and a butler and a champagne bottle and... You know, then he said, if you want candles, it's so much more money. So it was already very expensive. So I said no to the candles. And then he threw in the candles for free. He's like, you know what? You guys are good. Like, let me just put the candles for free. Um, and then I said, I want fireworks. And he's like, fireworks are not allowed yeah. on the Caldera side. And I'm like, yeah, but I absolutely need them. So he's like, I'll have to take special permission. And so he took special permission. And as you might have seen, like we had fireworks. Uh, and the fireworks were the highlight, right? It was the best. I, unexpected. Like, I didn't even know that was going to happen, but it did. So we we reached Athens, and then we had um, a five-hour layover in Athens. And we got out of the airport, like, went to a really nice place. When we came back to the airport, we had to check in our bags again because we were taking a local flight from Athens to Santorini. Now, like, you know, clearly, when you're flying international, you have 23 kgs allowed, but when you're, when you're flying domestic you only have 15 kgs check-in yeah and, and so yeah 
you know. My bag is 23 kgs. Guys, come on. Dyson, curler, straightener, eye makeup, lashes. I need some grease. So, <laughs> so uh, when we were trying to check in the bags, they said, okay, it's overweight and you need to shift some stuff, right? So, um, like everybody does, we moved on the side, we opened up all our bags and started moving some stuff over from Mahaz's bag into my bag, into my backpack. Backpack. Right? So I kept the ring in my backpack because um, I wanted to make sure that it's with me in the flight. I don't want to put it inside check-in. So it was in my backpack. And like this, this did not even occur to me, but you'll see how it gets really crazy. <laughs> so I moved a bunch of her stuff, makeup stuff yeah. into my backpack. And we checked in the bags. We, we did everything. We went to security, right? So in, in international sort of domestic flights, you don't have male, female separate lines. You just sort of all go together. Yeah. And we started going together. She went through first. I went through second. And they stopped my bag. And I was like, shit. Like, you know, why did they stop my bag? Because... <laughs> he had the ring inside, but... Because that's the thing, right? So I was thinking that, you know, sometimes when you're, when you're going through countries, at customs, they'll stop you because they think you're smuggling sort of a diamond. Or you're smuggling some expensive things <laughs> between countries. And so if they, if they see like a big diamond, they're like, okay, open that. Let me see it. Right. Yeah. I'm like, shit. You know, if they ask me to. I eat up a propose in the airport yeah. only. So I, they stop my bag. My heart's going crazy. And they're I like, is this your bag? Can you open the bag? And then they turn that x-ray screen towards us, right? To sort of see what's in the bag. And if you saw the x-ray screen, <laughs> like you could see the ring. Like it's there, right there. Okay, and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> right? So I'm like, holy shit, like, and I'm trying to distract Malika. Malika's like, what happened? Why did they stop my bag? Because she was concerned for her God knows what makeup. The Patrick Ta body glitter. It was sixty dollars. Dude. Okay, and for me that was so expensive. So she was concerned about that product, whatever that was, and I was like, I was like Miles, you know what? Go find the lounge. Like maybe we'll go to the lounge, go see where it is. And she's like, no, no, I care about this stuff. Like I want to make sure that my Whatever this was. Patrick Ta's body glitter. So I was looking at the screen to see what is in his bag because they never stop his bag. He just has laptop. So I was looking at the screen like what could there possibly be? And I couldn't And I'm it. thinking <laughs> if she sees what I'm seeing, right, <laughs> then it's all over. Like everything is over. And I think that was the, that was sort of the peak of my stress levels throughout the trip. <laughs> because I was like, oh shit. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, in any case, so he opens up the bag and he removes like a big Nivea bottle and he's like, I have to throw this out. I'm like, throw everything. <laughs> like, I don't care what you're throwing, throw everything. <laughs> Just give me my bag. Shit. Uh, so that was the worst sort of moment <laughs> for me. When we got through security, my stress levels were like completely gone. I'm like, okay, this is done. Finally, we, we made it through. Um, we go to St. Rainy, everything is good. The second day, which is the day that I was going to propose, um, which I didn't, which was a third, I moved the third day. Um, on the second day, we went to this amazing sunset place, right? <laughs> we saw the sunset. I'm like, holy shit. I sent pictures to my mom. I'm going to put a picture so you guys can see. It was the most incredible sunset I've ever seen, amazing right? Amazing sunset, amazing meal. Weather was top notch, like till so, 7, 7.30. Yeah. And so I called Petros, the, 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 planner. the planner. I'm like, hey, Petros, I'm super excited about tomorrow. I just saw the sunset. And given the villa that we had, it's going to be amazing. And she's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, it's going to be awesome. We're waiting for you. So on the third day, which is the day that we were, like, I was going to propose. D-Day. My plan was that I would ask my brother, the planner, to recommend a few dinner places for sunset. Okay. And then I would convince Miles that, hey, Miles, we go to this really amazing dinner place. So please get ready. And then, you know, we'll go for that sunset. And... You know, she would get dressed and I would sort of go um, to yeah. go to the, the spot. Okay, so we were staying at this Meli Meli place, okay? Uh, and we had to check out from there at around 12 p.m. Mm. Okay, so we checked out already and we just kept our bag in the lobby like we usually do. And then we went out for the rest of the day. We went to the beach. We got baked, completely baked. <laughs> we got yeah. completely tanned, not baked. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> 
We got completely tan. I think it's the it's the darkest I've ever been. Yeah, yeah. You guys saw. It was yeah. completely like you know tan. Um. So then we were heading back. And uh, it was around five o'clock, and that's when the weather started to. Dip. So we had we were able to check into the new villa by two, but I decided that we'll check in directly during the time of the proposal. After the proposal, yeah. Because I didn't want to see the location before. So the sunset typically around seven seven thirty. So I asked for a pickup at six. Okay, but here you you need to understand the the backdrop, right? So on the third day, we wake up. I'm super excited that this is the day. <laughs> I opened the door of my of my small villa from at Meli Meli to look at the sun. <laughs> there is no sun. There's only clouds. I'm like, what? What the hell happened? Like, where's the sun? There was no sun. There was no sun. All right, and it was only clouds. Extremely cold, windy, yeah. breezy. So immediately, I removed my phone. I'm like, okay, what does the weather look like? And it says, oh, it's just windy for three hours. After that, the sun is coming out. I'm like, okay, cool. That's awesome. No problem. We go outside. We take our swimming trunks. We rent an ATV and we go to the beach. Yeah. By the time we get to the beach, the sun is out. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, okay, this is awesome. The sun is here. We go to the beach. We, uh, you know, we swim in the ocean and and like have a really nice time. And then about four thirty, the sun starts going away. And this clouds start coming again. I'm like, what the hell is happening? Right. So this is three hours before the proposal. I can't imagine. The sun is gone. Right. The clouds are back. And I'm thinking. What the hell just happened? Like you know, this is insane because yeah. just yesterday was the most amazing sunset. So I open my phone and it says it's going to be cloudy through the night. Oh God! And I'm like, shit! Like this is it? Like you know, we planned everything for that sunset. Just for the sunset, and I had no idea, so I was very chill. Now I had like it was an existential crisis. Why? Because I could like I was going to tell her that we're going to a really good restaurant for a sunset. But she's like, yeah, there's no sun. Like, why do we spend so much money for a sunset restaurant that when is. there's no sunset? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but maybe the sun will come out. Because she's like, yeah, but look at the weather. Like, the sun is not going to come out. I'm like, yeah, but still, we should go and like sort of see it. He was trying to get me to that proposal spot, basically. Yeah, because I had to. No, it was more than getting her to the proposal spot. It was getting her to get ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that we could go to the proposal spot, right? Yeah, so he just wanted me to be like a little bit dressy, you know what I mean? I told him I'll wear jeans. It's too cold. I'm gonna wear jeans, and he got freaked out. He's like jeans. So I'm like, yeah, why are you wearing jeans? Like you know, wear something. He's like yeah, but it's so cold. And I said, good call. Made me put on a dress. Now here's the deal. Where do we get dressed, right? So we. <laughs> yeah, this part. So we go back to the old hotel, which is Meli Meli, and then. I request the reception like can you give us a room so we can just go and change for like a quick 30 minutes. He says we're booked. We're completely booked, but I can give you the laundry room. I'm like the laundry room. Let me paint a picture. It's in like the <laughs> basement and I'm all salty and beachy, okay? And my hair is all like, you know, guys, you saw the curly thing that I usually have. And I never leave the house without doing my hair like this. I always get my hair straightened and stuff. So I was like Beachy hair nonsense. He's like, we need to make it to the sunset, and he's a big fan of sunsets. Yeah. So I didn't want to make him like, you know, I was like, okay, child, let's go anyway. So this laundry room had like washing machines that were like running, dryers, one bathroom, and I had this one corner to get ready. So I opened my makeup bag and I started getting ready super fast because this it was seeming darker and darker by the second. You still didn't feel like anything was going to happen, right? Nothing, nothing. I never felt anything. This weather, I'm like, करेगा ही नहीं. But he wore his like Hawaiian shirt and all, and I'm like, okay, it seemed very normal to me, cause sunset. Mm. So I got ready really quickly. Thank God I wore like good makeup, and I had I was like, okay, I'll wear my this dress from Zara, and I'll wear heels. That's the only time I wore heels in the entire trip. Mm. I don't know why. Uh, he was hyping up the place a lot. He's like, let's go. It's a very beautiful place, and also I put on heels, and I'm like, okay, let's go. So I was ready to go basically, mm. and the, then the car came to pick us up. So the car came yeah. to pick us up. The plan was to go to this other villa. Drop our bags, um, and then go to this place for dinner. So the car came, and by the time Mars was getting ready, I went above, just sort of, you know, told. I took a picture, sent to my parents, just telling them that it's all gone, it's doomsday. Uh, yeah, it was gloomy and windy, it was so, gloomy. so cold. It was gray. It was like London, not Santorini. Gray, the video you guys exactly. saw. Exactly. So, so then I I go up to a computer and I'm like. Okay, like, is there any chance? Like, <laughs> like, is there any chance that the sun will come out? So I look it up, and they're like, 
So <laughs> we planned the proposal exactly at 6.30, right? We said, okay, 6.30 to 7.30, 7.30 is when the sun is setting. And so, you know, it'll be like a good shade of orange uh, between 6.30 and 7.30. So I opened the computer, I'm like, is there any chance? Like, so this is around 5.30 when the car was coming to pick us up. And it says, storm expected at 6.30 <laughs> with rain. I'm like, what? <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> like, it never rains. Yeah. And it's a complete outdoor setting. So if it rains, everything is gone. Like, there are no candles, everything is wet. Yeah. It's gone. It's um, and it's on the top of the cliff, so it'll rain there like the heaviest. So... <laughs> oh my in God. any case at that point I was just like you know what like it's over but we'll just go through with it oh anyway. god I can't imagine his stress levels I would not be the way he was he was so normal I don't know he yeah, was very really. normal stoic ah, like, what can you do he was very normal he's like ah, we'll go and he took my shot <laughs> okay this you have to oh, tell this them the story. Huh. so we sat in the car and I'm like, like I'm of course gloomy like this guy myself. <laughs> and Mal's like, don't worry, we'll go for another sunset in Mykonos. I'm like, yeah, but I was really feeling like a sunset today. Today. Um, and she's like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine, it doesn't matter. Um, and so Mal had a shawl. I'm like, hey, Mal, give me a shawl. Like, maybe I'll, I'll wear it. And she's like, what are you talking about? It looks stupid on you. Yeah, why is he uh -huh. wearing a girl's shawl? Because he has this floral shirt on. So I'm like, why are you wearing a different design shawl? I looked at him so weirdly, I'm like, why do you need the shawl? He was making it like a shawl. So I'm like, what? And he does these silly things sometimes. So I'm like, okay, to make me laugh maybe. So he put it on and he was playing with it and I was doing my own thing on the phone. So yeah. I didn't realize. So it was a 30 minute drive. We got to the villa and not to the villa. So the villa is secluded. It's sort of, a, it has a private entry and like it's impossible to reach. Yeah, like a hill. Yeah, so there's a hill and then has a private sort of walkway to the villa. So we reach to the walkway we get our stuff off and we start walking and you know i'm still like in a gloomy mood but then as soon as we start on the walkway we look to the left the ocean oh my god was breathtaking you guys the view was out of the world and i'm like wow like it was just like you know as soon as i'm, I'm getting goosebumps right now like as soon as you yeah. saw that it was just like it explodes in your face how beautiful it is you can only see the ocean for miles and miles and miles like it was i was like completely shook and i'm not a nature kind of girl like i'm not taken aback by nature <laughs> i'm not like oh my god sunset oh my but this was something else like for the first time i dropped my bags i'm like i have to take a video of what i'm seeing right now so i was taking a video for like six seconds and yeah I... yeah so she <laughs> she started taking a video um and i took the shawl off and i decided to Make it a blindfold. blindfold. Exactly. So that was the plan all along. Uh, to have a blindfold. Yeah. And then I signaled the photographers and videographers who were inside the villa that we had arrived. Um, and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, Miles, you know what I'm doing. <laughs> and, and yeah. She's like, no way. I'm like, I'm yes, like, no, absolutely. No, 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 no. I was so nervous. Like I had butterflies everywhere. And I was just like, I don't know what to expect because... I was blindfolded, I was blacking out, like there was no memory of what actually happened during that walk. I was completely like, gut it's in the video no as well. feeling mm. like that knots in your stomach, that's what happened to me. Okay, so I put the blindfold and I held her hand and I started walking and she's like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm like, Miles, you know what I'm doing. <laughs> Keep your back straight, you're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm like all like melty, you know, and he's like, no, no, walk straight, you're on camera, and I'm like, camera, and then I hear these, like, tick, 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 and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, exactly, so we walk through the walkway, Yeah. Um, and then, like the villa is, is solid, right, so as soon as the gate, as soon as you enter the gate, like straight up, bang on, it's the ocean, um, so it's, like, you, you saw the, you saw the video. video. So, as soon as we entered, uh, the song started playing. Uh, Say You Won't Let Go by James Arthur and I yeah. started crying. It's yeah. my ultimate proposal song. <laughs> so we we had pre-planned that with, with Petros and he played the music instantly. Like, you know, there was like these chills in the entire villa. It was loud music playing. And we had a big heart in the middle candles. of candles in the middle of the villa. There was a... Uh, an arch hmm. um, so it's an arch with some flowers there was a like a private dinner table with with flowers and a picture of us and everything set up 
And yes. That uh, was it? So we, we ended. I removed the blindfold. Yeah, and, and then I saw and I started crying, dude. Mm -hmm. I really started crying and I was so nervous. And he put on a lapel mic so that he mm -hmm. could record everything he's saying because long back like during these years I always told him you know in case you ever do like a proposal and stuff like that please make sure it's grand and I used to be like okay there has to be a video there has to be a picture like pictures taken because I want to remember everything because I know I'll black out I need to remember that moment and she did she, I didn't, did. she didn't remember anything that I said I didn't I didn't the speech he, he prepared a speech. speech he prepared a speech okay which you heard and so he put on the mic and everything I told him in small bits and pieces over the years of how I want the proposal to be. The music, the picture, the private butler, the table, the dinner, the song. He remembered every little detail and I was like, it takes so much for someone, especially like boys don't listen. I don't think there's anything that was left out from what I wanted in a proposal. Like the song, the venue though was not even in my wildest dreams. I never knew that could even she be She wanted possible. a photographer and a videographer so we had both. He had both and he filmed Max and Fotis. Yeah. yeah, Max and Fotis. They did an incredible job, job with the video, you saw that. Yeah, so we go inside, the music starts playing, and I take off the blindfold, the blindfold and she goes and stands in, inside of the heart. In the meantime, like I'm like I'm really quickly getting a mic'd up, basically, um, to get a lapel mic. And then I go there and we immediately sort of did the proposal first. Um, and then I knew that, you know, right after the proposal, she'd want like a really good video and like really good pictures yeah. so we had a one hour photo shoot, photo shoot <laughs> right after the proposal he knows me so well um and so yeah there are, there are a lot of those moments in the in the video like we didn't even get time to speak with our parents because yeah everything was happening so fast and i'm just like wait wait i'm engaged wait let me see let me see <laughs> let me like take this in but oh my god it was like the best proposal ever according to me and that's how it happened yeah. and yeah that is the whole story and i hope you guys enjoyed babe the best proposal ever i'm crying every time i see it i'm crying and i was just beyond my wildest imagination if any of your boyfriends want to plan <laughs> this feel free to reach out to me i will <laughs> go double a guys I love um, it i'm on instagram <laughs> Thank you so much for watching you guys. I really hope you enjoyed watching this and meeting my fiance. Mom and dad love you. <laughs> Mom and daddy. Daddy loves you. Daddy loves you. <laughs> A lot. Um, thank you. Everything will be in the bottom bar down below. Um, yeah, we'll see you. I will see you in the next video. <laughs> he's too busy. I'll see you when I see you. Yeah, he's too busy. You're all invited to the wedding if you can find it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. It's a private dinner, you guys, with my fiance. <laughs> Say what? What's up, guys? <laughs> guys, now she has to do a YouTube video with me. <laughs> guys, daddy has become daddy now. Look at this setup, y'all. Look at that. That's a private villa. Oh, sorry, that's a private villa. <laughs> <laughs> And guys, you wouldn't, Im I'll show you in the morning, you wouldn't imagine this view. Like, you can't see it now, but it's the bar. It's, we're all alone by ourselves. Oh my god.
there. <laughs> Guys, this entire villa was booked for us. So it's a private villa, no one can come through. That's the proposal setup. That's the proposal setup. So this was the setup for all of you wanting to know. That's the dinner. And that is a beautiful villa. That is the villa we're staying at. This entire thing was booked just for us and that is an ocean like a big ocean I'll show you in the morning I don't know when I'm gonna post this video but it goes all the way till here oh god he outdid himself and outdid my expectations I can't breathe look the villa all of this is private <laughs> and that's him the fiance. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm saying he's my fiance. <laughs> That's our breakfast arriving, that little man. Oh my goodness, look where we're having breakfast, you guys. Here, look at that. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my God, is this look. Guys, I can't stop showing you this. Like this is. Hello. <laughs> Petros. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> this is his place, you guys. Yes. Wow. guys good morning <laughs> good morning everyone <laughs> oh what is that <laughs> look at where I am oh my god this is like crazy I'm engaged. Well, I don't know I'm a fiance now okay I'm a fiance <laughs> Time to leave. Bye. <laughs> Woo. All the way that was our villa. Leaving this place. As a couple. As an engaged. Okay. I engaged now. I engaged. Sorry, but. Bye, Bella. So pretty.